So, lots of talk about the Philadelphia Flyers and Claude Giroux as of late. And for good reason, the Philadelphia Flyers went out there and lost yet again yesterday against the New York Islanders. 4-3, the score here in Long Island. And with that, the Islanders now have lost, what's the record over here? Let's go to the NHL standings and see how many games this team has lost in a row. 13! My goodness, 13 losses in a row. How bad is that? Either way, though, we still have ourselves a few conversations to go about some of the players on this Philadelphia Flyers team. One in particular is Mr. Claude Giroux himself. 34 years old, 5'11", 185, he's making 8.275 million bucks until the end of this season. This contract was a pretty good one, starting back in the year 2014-15. And now, because he is in the last year of this contract, there is a whole bunch of speculation that's going about as to whether or not Claude Giroux could, would, or should be seen as a rental piece, especially playing on a Philadelphia Flyers team that has pretty much wasted the prime of his career. Like, I'm sorry, they did have one Stanley Cup final run and all that, we get it, there was some good success in the early 2010s when Giroux was going out there getting 70-90 point seasons, but... Claude Giroux, for the most part, despite the fact that he is seen by many people as one of these franchise-defining forwards in the team and league-defining forwards in the league, that's a weird way to phrase it, league-defining forwards in the league, pretty much when you thought about hockey in the early 2010s, you thought about a few names, you thought about Crosby, you thought about Ovechkin, you thought about Giroux, you thought about whoever the first overall pick was in that given time frame, and that was pretty much it. Claude Giroux is a mainstay name when it comes to NHL conversation. And so now, this season, things haven't really been all too different for Claude Giroux. He's still producing, he's got 34 points in 40 games played as the captain of the Flyers, and it's been a growing discourse I've seen everywhere, especially on Philadelphia Flyer social media, that this guy just might want to change the scenery because he has wasted the prime of his career in Philly. He's got to go out there and maybe in some capacity wish that he was on a better team because one Stanley Cup Finals appearance in such a storied career where the guy goes out there in 984 games and gets 890 points, like to not have any consistent level of playoff success is somewhat frightening. Now, this is where we hear about the conversations. This is what Elliot Friedman said. GM Chuck Fletcher said on Claude Giroux's future earlier today, it will be Claude's decision. He also talked at length about how much Giroux means to the franchise and how his number will be retired. Giroux is going to meet with his agent, Pat Brisson, during the All-Star weekend, and we'll see where it goes from there. We had ourselves another conversation brought up here by Pierre Lebrun, saying that the agent Pat Brisson said to him, Claude and I will be spending time together within the next few weeks exploring his best options while having decisions with Chuck, or discussions, my bad. With a full no-move clause, Giroux can obviously stay put, but all options will be looked at, obviously. So we go over onto Elliot Friedman's 32 Thoughts. This is the same piece we looked at earlier today. 32 Thoughts, a lesson to learn, by the way, the entire conversation on this article starts out talking about Boko Imama, Jordan Subban, as well as the situation that happened with Christoph Robic. So go ahead and read that. It's very important stuff. Don't be racist, folks. I think everybody kind of knows how important of an impact these conversations can have. But going over onto thought number seven, during the All-Star break, expect Claude Giroux to sit down with his agent to discuss his future. I think, Friedman says, there are Colorado Avalanche players who would love to have him. The question is, if the organization decides that's the move they need to make. The right-hand shot makes sense, but it won't be easy for Colorado to fit. That means the possibility of a third team which raises the asset cost. There's still time for it to play out, and Giroux has control. Could we see a Colorado Avalanche trade with the Philadelphia Flyers acquiring NHL legend Claude Giroux? Now, to me, when I think about the Avalanche and the Flyers, the first thing I think about right away is the comments made by... Who the heck made those comments? It was just a few weeks ago. I cannot believe I forgot, but it was... Yeah, it was Bobby Clark, right? That's who it was. Talking about how the Philadelphia Flyers and their coaching staff, they wanted Kill McCarr. But they didn't get Kale McCarr because Ron Hextall just went out there and drafted Nolan Patrick second overall in 2017 instead. 
Back in those conversations, I saw a lot of people saying, oh, you know, Ron Hextall really screwed over the Philadelphia Flyers by not acquiring Ryan O'Reilly and doing all this stuff and not getting Kale McCarr and getting Patrick instead. Imagine if we had the best version of this team that they actually wanted to get, that Bobby Clark and the other executives on the team actually wanted to get, where they had Kale McCarr instead, they maybe made a trade for O'Reilly, they didn't trade away Shen and all this stuff. What if they have this team? And Claude Giroux goes out there and actually gets a playoff run or two again. All of a sudden, there's a lot more of a primer to say maybe this team goes out there and wins a Stanley Cup, especially considering the impact that Shen and O'Reilly had in St. Louis when they won. So there's another situation where it's like, oh, Claude Giroux, his career was wasted in Philly. Now, this might be a chance at redemption. Assuming he sits down with his agent and he says, yeah, I kind of want to go out there and I want to win. And Colorado is that team? Hey, imagine playing Claude Giroux on the Colorado Avalanche of all teams with McKinnon, with Landeskog, with Rontanen, with Kale McCarr, with Nazem Kadri. This team could be what is already absolutely stacked, even more above and beyond Celestial Galactic Avengers level threats stacked. And honestly, as long as Mr. Claude Giroux goes out there and decides that this is the best move for him, I think that it would be a pretty fun thing to watch. Like, I get it, I'm a Canucks fan, I'm not really supposed to be out there wishing for the success of Kale McCarr in particular because I got Quinn Hughes on my team, but come on. I think a lot of Canucks fans kind of acknowledge the same things, that yes, Kale McCarr and the way this guy has developed, it's sort of in a different stratosphere from where Quinn Hughes is. They're completely different players at the moment. And while Kale McCarr might be, in most people's eyes, better we still do love our Quinn, and we just kind of want to watch entertaining hockey. Hey, the Canucks hired a new GM earlier today, and that guy might trade away a whole bunch of players that are good right now for draft picks. So I, for one, can personally deal with a Colorado Avalanche team maybe going out there, acquiring Claude Giroux, being absolutely spectacular to watch, and putting on a show in the playoffs. Give Giroux that cup. Give that man his money. Okay, no, he's got his money already. He's making $8.275 million a season, or what the heck was it? $8.275? No, it's eight point just two seven five. Yeah, no, I got it. Never mind. So this guy, he's got all the money, he's got all the accolades, he's got, you know, the hundred point season under his belt, he's got the ninety point season, he's done all these great things at the NHL level except go the distance and win. He's went the distance once in twenty ten, but that was a decade ago. And so, you take a look at where the Philadelphia Flyers are right now, as the team that is last place in the Metro, there is really no fighting chance for this team to do anything in the postseason this year. And so, now we have ourselves a discussion that has opened the possibilities towards rentals that involve star, star players. Claude Giroux is still that good. Is he 100 points good? Probably not, but is he still maybe like 60, 70 points good? Yeah, I would say so. Take a look at the numbers he has right now. 34 divided by 40 multiplied out by 82. Wait, we could have just multiplied everything out by two regularly because he's got 41 games played. He's on pace for about 69 points, which is very nice, especially playing on one of the worst teams in the NHL. So for Claude Giroux, is this a guy that any team would want to go out there and add? Absolutely. Like you say, Claude Giroux is on the market and all of a sudden I think any team that is in the playoffs and that is already a guaranteed contender... Y'all should be calling the Philadelphia Flyers and trying to entertain these kinds of discussions over here. So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about the idea of the Colorado Avalanche maybe getting Claude Giroux, whether or not they would be interested in this kind of guy? Friedman isn't saying per se that the Avalanche straight up just want this guy. They're saying he sees many Avalanche players who would love to have him. You can replace Avalanche with any other team. And I think that sentence could remain true too. Hey, take a look at the Vancouver Canucks. Would Miller, Horvat, Garland, Petey, and Besser love to have a Claude Giroux added to their team? Probably. Take a look at the Canadians. Same thing with Suzuki, Caulfield, Toffoli, and Edmondson. There are probably players all around the NHL that would love to have a Claude Giroux, but Friedman singling out the Avalanche first and foremost only on this article. To me, at the very least, it is sort of important. So if you're a Colorado Avalanche fan, talk to me in the comments. What do you think about the idea of acquiring a Claude Giroux? Playoff rentals don't really get any better than this. I'll tell you that right here. You talk about the Blake Coleman's and the Barclay Goodrows and all the other trade rentals that teams seem to make or are kin to Macon around this time of the year, and Claude Giroux is one of the better ones, by far.
So let me know in the comments all your discussions and thoughts. If it is a Claude Giroux to Colorado trade that we see happen, what do you think the return is going to be? Is it a form of a prospect and a pick and a whole bunch of other stuff? Is there a roster forward in there too? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.